Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, I want to talk about fall gardening. Plants that you can direct sow now in the beginning of August. Other plants you may want to start as transplants. But also give you a tour of the garden, show you my fruit trees, just talk about stuff that's going on. So I have been talking about burnout. I just personally get burned out really at the end of July and August. Always try and take that vacation. <laughs> it screws up everything with staying up on the garden. So I got a lot under control. A lot is not under control. But when I get like that, what I decide to do is try and take on the big projects. I know that sounds weird, but projects that I can really see a difference. Like this area was all overgrown. We are near my house inside the fence line. And I just pulled out a lot of plants, put down mulch, that's going to stay a pepper section over there. They do really well. And then right in there to the right, I have some sort of rose bush that's beautiful, filled with spines and thorns on there. But cut that out. Anyway, I opened up the space, and that kind of gives me a little bit of energy back when I see big changes going on. Next year, I'm going to transition this a little bit. And my point being that I had tomatoes growing in there, cucumbers growing in there. I'm going to shrink down the size of my garden for higher maintenance plants, you know, still plant all the space, but now I'm starting to think about next year, putting stuff on paper. This whole space are my strawberries and raspberries, and they kind of got overgrown. If you're ever gonna buy raspberries, blackberries, buy the, cl the clumping variety. They're called erect varieties. They don't spread out. They just stay in a clump. So that will be taken care of, but you know, we can start thinking about what we want to do in the fall, what you might want to do next year. We'll get into the main garden in a second. Let me show you some of the fruit trees. Hey, Willow. This is our new dog, Willow. She stole my sock. Say hi. Paul, can we get Paul? Here, Let's see if she does it. Paul, good girl. So the fruit trees are beat up from my cicadas and I have them planted up in different parts of my garden. So I just want to show you a couple. This is, I believe, wish I had memory for names of plants, but I'm pretty sure this is my Bartlett. It is loaded with pears, and I highly recommend that. You got some more in there. And I'm not really spraying these right now or doing much to take care of them because the cicadas came in, and that's what they did. They cut into the bark, they lay eggs, the branches die. So I've actually fed my fruit plant, my fruit trees a lot, just to let them do their thing, establish more, and hopefully they're okay next year. As I get better at managing pests and disease, you know, I will do some videos on them, but I don't want to just make up stuff. But it is loaded with pears. Here's another pear tree that I'm growing. It's the kiefer or kiefer if I'm saying it right. And I do recommend getting dwarf variety fruit trees. There's a lot of them. And basically they're grafting the upper trunk portion and fruiting portion to a root stock. And just FYI, right where they graft them together, you'll see a line. You don't want to mound dirt up to here because another root system can come out of here and that's going to mess up the dwarf uh, growth of your fruit tree. The dwarf varieties are nicer because this is six feet, may get a little bit taller, but it's a lot easier to spray, a lot easier to get fruit. The other tip is there's, I don't know, 10 pears on here. You don't really want more than that on a smaller tree. They sometimes can produce 15, 20, 25 fruits the first year putting it into the ground. Let me explain that in a second. But by having too many fruits on there, the plant, the tree doesn't get established and it can kill off the tree because all the energy is going into the fruit. And I lost a pear tree by kind of being stubborn. The second year I had like 30 or 40 peaches on there, I'm sorry, peaches, and it just sapped the energy out of the peach tree and it died. So this didn't grow from a little sapling. This is a three-year-old tree that I got at Home Depot and I recommend spending up getting three-year-old trees that are potted put them into the ground, they're going to grow quick, more quickly and they're going to produce more quickly. Um, but that's about all I've figured out with trees right now. This is my pollinator garden. It is surrounded by apple trees. Apple trees are doing okay. They got beat up by the cicadas. As I learn more about them, I'll talk more about them in videos. But I did find here in Maryland Zone 7 that peach trees and pear trees seem to be doing okay with the diseases here. Apple trees are more susceptible to different things. So I have a lot of butterfly bush in there. 
Um, that's false indigo, it stopped bloom, blooming, purple cone flower. Different color uh, butterfly bushes. Now, they feed and attract pollinators and butterflies, but they don't provide food for the life cycle of, I think it's the monarch, um, of one of the butterflies. So you want to make sure you also plant a lot of milkweed, which I have in there, in different places of my garden, so that you can feed the life cycle of butterflies, but also, you know, feed pollinators and attract pollinators in there. And here's some of the damage, like there's no, I mean, it's just crazy what the cicadas did. There are no apples on here. This is a Granny Smith, which I'm really looking forward to, but maybe one day. So a lot of my trees are recovering. So we're coming into the familiar side of the main garden. This was going to be all single stem pruned tomatoes for video, but deer came in and ate them down. So they're just surviving now. Lots of weeds, overgrowing beds that I'm not using back there. Leeks, pretty well, doing pretty well. The pumpkins have taken off. I have to get in there, dig out my potatoes. They're ready to be dug out. You know, and I'm just kind of finding I'm running out of time. Planted a new wave of a different type of bean. These are in the yard log and bean families, but they're staying dwarf. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll do more videos on there. But this plant is really resistant to different diseases. The big potato experiment, uh, just a preview. I mean, there are potatoes in there. This one looks like something chewed into it. But that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm gonna be dumping all these out soon. Sweet potatoes doing well. Deer coming to here. You can see that they're eating the uh, tomato sweet potatoes. So coming into the main garden, I am still trying to whip some of the summer parts of this garden into shape. Also be thinking about fall. So now that we are coming to September, um, October, November, when the season cools down, you want to get your peas in now. I'll be doing a short video on that. Peas, you can direct sow into the garden. They are going to need 75 days of growth to get you the pods in general before a frost comes. The pea plant itself can take a light frost, but the flowers and pods don't really do well to freezing and then coming back. They're kind of rubbery. So you want to have enough time for your peas. I've also direct sowed um, radishes every two weeks. I put in beet seeds, um, kohlrabi, and you can get them into the ground now. They're going to grow really quickly because it's warm, so they'll get established. And you know, as the cool season comes, you'll have enough time for them to fully develop. This is my third wave of cucumbers, so maybe the fourth. I think it's the third. Doing really well. So I'm taking care of this space using my sprays on there and letting other parts of the garden go cucumber-wise. And I'll show you. I'll be yanking all those out. Yard-long beans. They just grow incredibly fast, absolutely delicious. You want to pick them when they look something like that. When they get larger like this, you let the pods dry, you can harvest the seeds, you can cook the seeds. I want to get in here, show you as we walk around. One butternut, two butternut, three butternut, squash. I don't know if there are any in there. There's one, that's four. There's an acorn, five, six, seven, eight, one over there, nine butternut, just on this side. We have the acorn squash, if you have a good eye, that's the second one. And I'm finding I really like, I am stuck in the sunflower, that I really like growing fewer winter squash, but taking care of them. They just do incredibly well. I mean, you can go from, you know, just a plant that kind of gets by and you get a couple squash on there to something that is just huge and thriving. We'll talk about this space in a second. Here's the other side. I don't know if we counted those or not. And then one more. It fell off right down in there. So lots of butternut. There's one straight back. And then I can actually see some. So this butternut squash is growing across my compost, down into the ground, and it's still going. I wanted to cut in here, show you the compost area, not because of the compost, because of what's growing. So that is a bean variety growing out of the compost bin. That's gonna give me green beans. Uh, some of my peas from 
the fall, or not the fall, from the spring, are all in here, and these are just going to drop and probably grow peas out of here at some point. But I wanted to show you the butternut squash. This is butternut. It is just going crazy, and there's three more in there. I, don't even, I lost count. I don't know how many we have. One, two, three right there. The vine, you can visibly see how much it grows day to day. There's another one. And I'm just letting this vine go. See how far it goes. But it will keep going. And they root out, I told you this before, I think, and anchor into the ground. So root systems are being formed everywhere. And this will just keep going. But I'm going to have plenty of butternut, butternut squash to store. And these are some tomatoes that are growing on their own. There's the other garden that I'm not even going to get to. But that one's out of control too. So good news is I love the success. I probably love growing things and teaching more than I like harvesting. I need a harvester to help me out. But things are going pretty well. Tomato volunteers, I'm letting grow. I'll get tomatoes off of those in September. In this space right up here, which I did a video on, it'll be coming out, I started planting some of my fall crops. This was only maybe three days ago, and I don't know if you can see in here, but the radishes are in there, peas are in there. I put in spinach, lettuce, beets, all plants you can direct sow now. And maybe, yeah, you get them in a little bit too early, that's fine. But these are going to be planted in succession because you don't want to plant a thousand radishes, you know, 50 spinach plants. You're just not going to be able to eat it all. So plant it in waves starting now every two weeks. Some of your other plants, maybe you don't have the space. Like I had to open this all up to get more space while I'm clearing out my summer crops. Those are two pump or uh, two watermelon plants that self-seeded so I decided to save them we'll see what happens and you can see in the video I actually filled this with cheap topsoil one year old straw that's straight back there and then on the top just um, in ground garden soil just basic garden soil and that was on sale for five bucks and just put a couple of inches on top I'll be doing a video on there so peppers are doing well the asparagus looks amazing where we're standing now that was a whole asparagus uh, row and that's what I was talking about it's just yank out the stuff you want to change make your changes because now I have all these beds and I don't have that asparagus row as I've talked before tomatoes look good this cucumber plant I am trying to save gonna keep this one here is one trellis of cherry tomatoes coming up the cattle panel, working on saving those plants. Just did that video, hopefully you saw it, because hydrogen peroxide makes a difference. Here is wave number four of cucumbers, a little beat up, but they did get sprayed, so I will take care of those, send them up this side. I'll be pulling out all of these cucumbers, plants, not gonna save them. This is a different fungal disease on here. They're not getting sprayed, but I will take off the remaining cucumbers. That'll be good for this week. And I'll be, you know, opening up the space. You can see, you know, I have some stuff laying around. The tomatillo is going crazy. You know, you want two tomatillos for pollination reasons. At least that's what I read. I don't know if that's 100% true or not, because it doesn't make sense to me that even if they're the same variety, they say you want two. Anyway, plenty of tomatillos next year it's just going to be one they grow like tomatoes but 10 times better if you're taking care of them and they just go all over the place one row of tomatoes got to get in there pick all those I'm making tons of sauce we'll get down there in a second this is what I'll be keeping I was talking about this in my short uh, clickbait tour look at all those beautiful tomatoes this was sprayed with hydrogen peroxide. It's going to get sprayed again with hydrogen peroxide. The ratio that I show you in the video that I did uh, maybe a week ago is not damaging the leaves. It looks like it's starting to get the disease under control because there's no white, or I'm, yellow, I'm sorry, yellow ring around there. But all these guys will need their second round of H2O2. But just look at all the beautiful tomatoes. Now this plant looks like it's dying off and it's not as big. And I believe, I thought the green zebra was an indeterminate tomato, and it wasn't. It's a determinate variety, whatever it is, it's not growing as well. So I'm gonna kind of look that up again. But all kinds of just beautiful 
tomatoes in here. That's the homestead. It's probably the number one tomato I recommend for hot, humid areas. That's going to have like 30 delicious tomatoes on there. But I'm going to keep this part of my garden next year. It's going to be all the bigger beef steaks right along here. Some more of those yard longs. It's a great disease resistant bean. Cleared out this space. You can see the piles of weeds. I always say you don't have to do everything. So my goal was to just to yank out the weeds, have some potatoes to put in there. Here's some of the kale that I ripped all the leaves off. They're starting to come back, but I need to put dust on there because it looks like some worms came back. So that will also, the kale will also regrow leaves. You know, and this is what my garden looks like at times. I just leave stuff where it is, get the job done. This is the first planting of cucumbers and they're going to be coming out just because I'm going to clear out this space and they are still going. You know, I'll wait till I harvest some of these to get bigger. But it's just time for this plant to come out. Just massive cucumbers. This was heavily pruned. And next year, less cucumber plants, a little more in the wave idea. But I feel like year three, I mastered growing cucumbers here. So that's good. And I take notes on all of this. The okra, that's overgrown okra. You want to get your okra, as I always say, when it's smaller, but it grows so fast, I always miss it. Okra in here, and let's go down here, because this is my green zucchini plant there, and yellow straight neck squash. The yellow straight neck squash is still doing really well. I've been spraying and taking care of it. The zucchini plant is dying off. That looks like some powdery mildew starting. I don't see any more zucchini in there. So this green zucchini will be ripped out of here, but the squash plant continues to produce. It's been producing all season long into the first week of August. And again, this is kind of a testament to, look at that is pruning, the spray routine. I mean, you, you don't need more than one squash plant if you're taking care of it. This was my contest tomato plant that has gotten no sprays, no love, no care. I got these in late, just didn't take care of them, and they're not doing so well. The corn I stopped watering because animals came and ate it, and this will be for for decoration. Wave three of cucumbers, and you can see what I mean, is that I'm pulling out the other ones that are beat up and still producing because these guys are doing really well. This will all get bottom pruned out. The lower leaves are a little bit beat up. Get my sprays on here, and this will continue to grow up here, and I will be getting cucumbers into September, which is awesome. My next wave of beans, these are purple potted, which look like green beans, but they're purple, and some more uh, yard long types. And I wanted to show you, I sort of am practicing what I preach. This is second wave, maybe third wave of the dark green zucchini. So that's why I'm pulling out the other plant, but look at that, beautiful. And I don't see anything else growing in there, but it's flowering and I am trellising it right up this post and I have more cucumbers, fourth wave of cucumber. You can see one right down there, another one over there. So I'm not gonna, you know, fuss with trying to keep plants that are starting to die off alive because I put in the next wave of plants, which really, really makes a difference in my opinion to keep the harvest coming to your table. The tomato trellis has been sprayed with hydrogen peroxide. It's getting sprayed again today. We had like hot weather, then we get an 80 degree weather, then we get a 55 degree night. And all this temperature change and rain and then humidity is really having the uh, creating conditions for the leaf spot to go crazy. So it's all over my tomatoes. And when I was away, I got off the spraying routine. So diseases got established and that's just the way it is. But the tomato plants are still producing really well. I know this one's coming out. This is the pineapple. I love that plant. In here, 
We have a watermelon that just snapped off because I didn't support it, so we'll take that. But I pulled out all my dwarf tomatoes. I won't be doing that again. That was cool, but I just didn't need them. This was supposed to be a dwarf plant. I think these are patio yellows, and they're not dwarfing, so I'm not sure what I did if I swapped a seed variety with another seed variety. But again, too many tomatoes. I didn't want those there anyway. But I'm going to make another mark in my brain to make sure I grow what I can eat and give away or sauce. Fig tree, doing amazing. It's a mission fig. No figs on there. Hope it gets figs. If it doesn't get figs, it just might be decorative. But I have to get in there and cut out all the leaves from the bottom. Pulled out everything that was just about in my vertical towers. These will get planted up for um, the fall. Some of the plants that you can plant now, if you want to seed start cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, just start them in cups, put them outside where they get a lot of shade and let them start growing. You can seed start lettuces, spinach, um, you can put turnips in the ground now. I like the purple top turnips. You can put kohlrabi in the ground. Anything that's really cool weather here in Maryland Zone 7, you can put them into the, the ground. I'll be seed starting peas and just getting the cool weather crops growing as seed starts or in the ground. And even though I'm burned out, I'm keeping, you know, an eye on that. I love the fall garden, so I'm trying to get those plants started. So come September when my energy comes back, I don't feel like, ah, oh, you know, I wish I would have started a fall garden. Lots of garden redesigns going on here in my mind, in the garden. And my whole goal is to grow less varieties that take time and maintenance, but grow more types of vegetables so that I can come out here every day next year and just have something to pick. And I want to be able to do this from April, May, June, all the way into November. So it'll be a little bit of a challenge, but I think it'll be really cool. Thanks for watching. I hope your summer garden still is producing. Hope the burnout's not too bad. And just start thinking about what you want to rip out, what you want to redesign, and maybe plant, you know, if nothing at all, maybe a flat of lettuce and spinach, you know, put some seeds in the ground, and this way you can have plants in the fall. Again, thanks for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.